Okay, in this tutorial, um, we're just going to have a look at Revit's uh, legend functionality. Now, to get us started, I have uh, created these four walls here, with, um, and I've inserted some doors here and some windows up there, just so we can have some data to play with. Now, um, okay, the first thing we need to figure out is what they actually um, look like. So if we go into here, uh, on landing your project browser, you'll see under legends, we have a door legend, key plan, and a keynote legend. So if we look at the door legend, first of all, you'll see we have some text which comes in from the standard templates. Um, but the, the items themselves aren't actually included. Now, we'll create our own from scratch. Uh, and the one we're going to do first is the, um, the wall legend. So in order to create that, we go to our view tab here. Uh, and this is where you'll find things like your default 3D view and schedules and quantities and all the rest. And right beside it there, you see we have legends. So if I just drop down this and click on legend, um, we can just type in a name, so wall legend. And we can give this a scale. So I find 1 to 10 will work reasonably well on this. And then we can click OK. So we get this blank view here. With, um, with nothing in it. So the next thing we need to do is start adding the various components to it. So we do that by going to the Annotate tab. And here where we have our Detail Lines, Regions and Components, if you drop out Components, you'll see we have a Legend component. So if I click on this, um, it'll go through the project data and give us things that we can create legends from. So we can find it here. Uh, just use the drop down there and if I go to the bottom of this we should find walls. So these are um, all of the walls which are currently in the template and you can just grab these out and uh, just well, for instance this one here if I click on it that'll go in. Um, let's see what else we have here. Um, well we can take that one and put it in. It'll center uh, or justify depending on what you want there so I'll just do that with it. Uh, and I'll grab another one. It makes sense to do this with um, uh, parts that you're actually using or wall configurations you're actually using. Uh, I like to increase the detail level and shade them up just to add an extra bit of information to them. Now, uh, once you've done this, we need to start looking at, at um, labeling it up. So depends on what naming convention you're going to use, but I can just move this down smaller first. Um, you can very simply add a piece of text to this. So I'm going to call this um, uh, cavity wall. Now that's a bit small, so what I'm going to do is just change this up to 7 millimeters. Click back in here. Something like that, just give it a name like that. Now, the other thing we can do in here is we can start applying keynotes as well. So if I go back into the annotate here, you will see along the side here, we have keynote. And if you drop that down, you can select a material keynote there. So it makes perfect sense to hover over it and put that to there like that. Now, it's popped up this dialog because it doesn't know what material that is. And I know that it's brick. So I'm just going to go into F. 10 uh, clay for a facing brickwork there. So if I double click on this, click OK, there we go, it'll pop that in. And anywhere else that that material has been used, you can see it hovering there. This is going to be an installation, so let's just click that. Um, and I don't remember where that goes. Let's see, let's find installation in here somewhere. This is not the easiest system in the world to use. Uh, masonry, cutting timber, water, lining, sheathing, ventilation, air conditioning, building fabrics, sealants. It's a load of stuff in here, um, and I really haven't got a clue where they are. So I'm going to come at that another way. I'm going to leave those keynotes in place. Um, and I'm going to pop in another one here. This one I do know is concrete block. So that'll be masonry again. So F10, uh, concrete common block work. So let's use that one. Uh, and then I've got some plaster there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
cancel that. Um, okay, so we have this extra information here, which I need and I haven't got populated in. So what I can do is I can look at the, the wall type itself and, um, and make some changes to it. So we can see there it's uh, 102 brickwork, 75, 100 block and a bit of plaster. So I'm not sure if I actually use that one, but if I go back into my 3D view, we can have a look. Uh, and I can change one of them to it. Uh, let's see, where was it? Uh, brickwork, insulation. I think that might actually be it. Anyway, if I go to the edit type here and go into its structure, and we've seen this before, um, we can start adding some information on the material here. So once it's material common brickwork, uh, if I go into this, it's just going to pull up the material information here. And under the identity data, you can see there it's uh, F10110, and that's the one that I put in. So under the bat insulation here, uh, we can have a look at the identity data and there's nothing there on that. So what we do is we can, if we like, um, just write it in straight away here. So for instance, uh, I can type in just bat insulation. Something like this and click OK. And click OK on this, click Apply, click OK. And if I go back into my legend, you will see that that has now been put in. The question mark is coming through from this. It's actually looking for a code for this part. And the tag is then looking for information to go there. So I think they're separated by a tab or something. Um, and you can do the same there for, for the plaster. But once you start connecting everything together, uh, it'll all work. Okay, so that's um, all good to know. So the next thing we need to do is look at pulling this into a sheet. And when we look at the sheets themselves, you can see um, it's just a case of dragging them in as you would any other component. So I'll just click on that and bring it in. Uh, and like everything else, uh, it'll just go ahead and do its job. Now, um, let's see what else we have in here. Well, we have some windows and we have some doors. So I'm just going to go straight into the door legend here. And I'm going to delete these because we don't need them. And again, add in some components here. But this time I'm going to go for my doors. Um, I've got one there like that. Now, when you bring in some components will allow you to put in different views. So for instance, I can put in the floor plan view. I can change that now to a front elevation like so, and then a back elevation if needs be. Yeah, I'll center them up there. Like that. So depending on the component, uh, it might afford you those opportunities. Now, other things we can do here is we can start actually adding a bit of extra information. So for instance, if you wanted to do dimensioning on this, you can. So I can grab from there to there and do that. Um, for the most part, though, I would tend, my personal preference is to stick with um, the specification-led um, approach. So you'd identify the door here with a tag of some description, and then everything else would be farmed out to a specification. Um, and again, you just add in text as you like. And that's our door legend, so we can also do, um, sorry, clear all that stuff off and we can also go ahead and create a window legend as well which is exactly the same thing so window legend and again we're going to go back into our uh, annotate tab here grab our legend components find our windows which will be down the bottom and uh, again so it's front front back and plan view there. So you can start adding in that information as you like. Um, that's the basics of it. So hopefully you've learned something. Um, thank you for watching.